Welcome. Today I want to talk about things you need to consider before you embark upon or begin a public presentation or a presentation or what we know as public speaking. I want to begin with a quote. Of all the fears, public speaking is considered the highest. 75% of individuals suffer from speech anxiety. And we're going to talk about how to overcome some of that anxiety today. Now, if you have any questions at all, you can answer them. You can, I'll answer them at the end of the video. The aim of this video or live is to provide a roadmap or path of how to arrive at a successful speech, knowing that it's going to be public or in front of people. So I hope you find this helpful. I think it will challenge you in a few areas that you hadn't considered before. And we're going to break this up into three different sections. The pre-speaking issues, the non-speaking issues, and the actual presentation. So this live will take, or this video will take three, or we'll have three different sections. So let's begin with the pre-speaking issues that you need to think about. And as, you, as I talk through these, ask yourself, wow, am I doing that? Or am I doing that as well as I could be doing that? I hope that this talk, this short talk will inspire you to improve your ability to present. Because if you have a successful, if you're better at presenting, that means you'll be more persuasive, more interesting, more informative. And that will always bode well for a career. So you want to keep that in mind. All right. One of the things, one of the first things I think you have to be aware of and place emphasis on is preparation. When you're going to make a, pub, a presentation or a public speech, make a plan. Have a plan of how you want to finish or prepare this. Most people never make a plan. They just go at it ad hoc. A-D slash or dash H-O-C. Ad hoc means improvise. They don't have a plan. And I'm going to challenge you on your next presentation to finish early. Why do you want to finish ahead of the deadline? So that you can practice. You need to practice before you give the actual presentation. And I'm going to suggest that you either record yourself or practice in front of a mirror because preparation alleviates. Alleviates means to decrease, improve, alleviates stress. It makes it better. So it makes the situation better to alleviate. A-L-L-E-V-I-A-T-E. -L -L -E -E. It alleviates stress the more prepared you are. Part of the reason you're nervous, not the whole reason, experience is the other part, but part, the first part of why you're nervous is because you're not prepared. The second part mainly of why you're nervous is because you need more experience. You lack experience and so you're nervous. That's normal. But being prepared is something you can control. You can't control being inexperienced. You can only gain more experience. But you can control being prepared. And what I find is that 90, 85%, 80% of students are not well prepared. And you will be nervous if you're not well prepared. Everyone would be nervous. Now, this is really important, is selecting a topic. What are you going to talk about? Now, I have to select a topic every week, twice a week, on Instagram for lives on Wednesday and my pronunciation classes on Saturday. So, where do I, how do I select a topic? A lot of times, it's from the audience, the viewers, you all, who give me suggestions, and I think, yes, that's a good idea. Another way to select a topic is to find out what's currently popular and talk about that within the area or subject that you need to discuss. And then finally, 
what is an area, this is more advanced, but what is a neglected topic, an area that you know a lot about, but you, re you feel that maybe people don't know enough about it? And so you can talk about neglected areas. Neglected means people don't know enough about it. They've overlooked it. But selecting a topic is really important. If your topic is uninteresting, you will not have a successful presentation. You can avoid this problem by asking your audience what they want to, what they want to hear. That's a very straightforward if you have the benefit of co contacting them. I have the benefit on Instagram. I'm always asking or soliciting. Soliciting is a big word for asking. Solicit, S-O-L-I-C-I-T. I'm always soliciting um, opinions about the topics because this is, this is critical on Instagram. If you don't like the topic, you won't listen. Next, we are going to talk about, <clears throat> this is a little bit more advanced, but it's something that great presenters understand, and that is the purpose. Why are you presenting? So for me, my purpose here today and every Wednesday and Saturday when I go live is to inform. So I'm providing information. I'm not advising. When we get to questions and answers, sometimes I offer advice. I'm not selling you anything except maybe just to join or follow my Instagram account. I, I'm not con trying to convince you of anything, but in business, people are selling and convincing. And then uh, there are a lot of uh, Instagrammers who are entertainers. I'm not a great entertainer as such, but the point is that your speech or presentation has a purpose and you need to know what it is. And then that will dictate or influence the type of information you present. And it will also inform the structure. Do you see the, the vertical word structure? It's, this is an advanced concept that we don't have time to go into, unfortunately, but the different purpose, a di different purposes require different structure. And so this is a very interesting point that we should probably pick up on at a future date. All right, if you're gathering questions or thinking about a question, write it down and we will talk about it near the end. PowerPoint. If you're using a PowerPoint or any sort of presentation, use few words not a lot. Look at the next one. I actually, it's ironic because I'm going to read it, but in general, no reading or long texts. How many of you have seen teachers that present this very long, they're just copying from a book or students copy from a book and they read their presentation. This is boring. Don't do it. And it's not very impressive. Don't do it. Use few words and then fill in the blanks. So unless it's a special quote or specialized technical information, you don't need to put a lot on the page. Use pictures and illustrations to make your point and proof read your PowerPoint. This is something students in general neglect across the board. This is a phrase, across the board, means universally, everyone's doing it. Across the board, students are failing to proofread. And this is critical. You need to proofread to eliminate the small errors because you want to get into the habit now. So in your career, you're in, you have good habits and you're proofreading and you're not making errors in your presentations to clients. This is not a good look. You want to be professional. And the way, one way you're professional is to eliminate a lot of errors. All right. I hope that's clear. Let's move on to non-speaking issues. Non-speaking issues include some of the following. Don't be late. This is simple, but not always followed. This gives people a reason not to listen. 
I remember when I first started my Instagram account, I was advised by someone who said, I'm always 10 minutes late on my lives. Five to 10 minutes late, they can wait. I was shocked. I was shocked. Now in some cultures, Latin cultures in particular, it's okay to be a few minutes late. In other cultures, it's, it's considered rude. But if you're on time, it's, there's no problem. But when you're late in some cultures with some people, they can be offended. Don't be late, it's simple. Then you don't offend anyone. You don't lose credibility. Check your internet, your social media connections before you make a presentation. Now, obviously, if the internet goes out now, I have no control over that. So that's not your problem if there's an internet issue. But everything else is under your control. So you need to be professional and be prepared. Dress appropriately. Now, I probably am not the person to talk to you about this because I tend to dress too formal. And in Instagram, it's more relaxed. I understand that. And also for YouTube. YouTube is also more relaxed, less, less formal. I tend to dress a little bit more formally than I should. But the point is, you want to dress so that you don't distract from your presentation. So whatever that means, dress to your audience, dress appropriately. And posture. This is a big one. You probably can't see, but I try to keep my shoulders back. But when I first started um, presenting, it was really difficult. I was talking like this. It's very difficult. You need to practice. Good posture is not automatic. You need to practice good posture. Having your shoulders back, your head up, gives the audience the feeling that you understand what you're talking about, you're in control and you're confident. And they're more willing to listen in this situation. So maintain good posture. I would recommend practicing in front of a mirror. I have the benefit of looking at videos every week so I can see and assess my posture. But you need to do that and make improvements. Don't worry if it's poor. Start improving today. And finally, the third part is the actual presentation. Let's talk about the actual presentation. Start well. First impressions matter. Clarity of the first sentence, maybe an anecdote or something interesting like a statistic or an interesting quote or a definition. But you want to start in a way that grabs the audience, grabs them and it, it entertains, uh, somehow catches their attention. Now, on that note, I want to ask you, do you all remember how I started this live? Was it an anecdote or a story? Was it an interesting statistic or a quote? Was it a definition? Does anyone remember? I will tell you in a minute. I started with a quote and a statistic. A statistical quote is what I started with to try to grab your attention and underscore the importance of this topic so that you would listen. And this is all part of gathering or co not coercing but hooking your audience so you can so they will listen to you more carefully all right oh sorry we've already we've already looked at that discussion question let's move to the next speaking this is a very important issue that everyone needs to listen up to Speak slowly. I, you don't have to speak as slowly as I do. I speak quite slowly. But speak slowly when the tendency for young people when they're first presenting is to speak too quickly, too softly, and therefore not very clear. So they speak very softly and very quickly. This is not going to help get your message across. So speak slowly. You might have to, or slower than you normally would, so you might have to record yourself. Speak clearly. Articulate the words. 
and speak loud enough for everyone to hear you. If you speak softly, this, this portrays a lack of confidence, and more importantly, people can't hear you. If they can't hear you, they can't be informed by what you're saying. All right. Now, overall message. This is might be the most important point of this section. Now, I've talked about clarity. Clarity in the introduction. You want to have a clear beginning. You want to have clarity of pronunciation. You want to speak clearly. But this clarity, the third clarity, is different. This is really important. It's more important to have a simple, clear message than a very complicated message message that is not clear. I'll say it again. It's more important to have a clear message than lots of information and it's not very clearly structured. So I have a very clear message today. I want to help you improve your public speaking and I've looked at three different sections. The pre-presentation preparation stage, the non-speaking part, how you dress, etc., how you speak, and then the third part is the actual presentation. I've kept it clear, relatively simple, so people can follow. If you have a lot, the tendency for young people, young presenters, however old they are, young presenters, is to have pack the presentation with lots of information and no structure. So at the end of the presentation, people are thinking, I'm lost. What was the point of that presentation? So the way you achieve clarity is to think about, all right, is this slide proving my point? What's the overall aim of my thesis? What's the, or what's the overall aim of my presentation? If you remember, I wanted my overall aim, I try to always state in the beginning, it's this, you know, in this case, it was to provide a clear path to a successful speech, but you should have clarity of purpose and then every slide should somehow be directly or almost directly related to that topic. And then you will achieve clarity. And guess what? If you're clear, people understand you, they learn or they can be convinced or they can be sold or persuaded or whatever your purpose is for talking. But I can tell you, if people are confused after your speech, you will achieve none of that. People don't react positively to confusion. It's better to have a simpler message that's razor sharp clear, clear than lots of information and no clarity. All right, that is a really important point. I can't emphasize that enough because my best students at university struggle with this point. And especially the best students struggle with this point because they want to put all their information into one paper or one speech and they forget about the audience which has to follow all of this. And sometimes it's better to lighten up on the information so that it's clearly followed by your audience. All right. Finally, don't speak too long. Speak long enough to get your message across convincingly, but not longer. You don't want to bore people. And on that note, I'm finished. I've given you what I feel are essential points for public speaking. I want to just wa wrap up with a few interesting conclusions. Now, I want to tell you, this slide is particularly interesting or because it summarizes what I've talked about in ways that you probably haven't noticed. So watch this. Conclusions. If you notice in all three sections, most of what I'm asking you to do requires discipline, not talent in English. And that is an important point to remember. Most of the process of speaking, uh, giving a good presentation requires discipline. Finishing on time, practicing in front of a mirror, rehearsing your speech, making sure the points are clear. These, this is a discipline issue. It's not a talent issue. 
And that's really important. So if you think you don't have good English, that doesn't matter in making an effective presentation. Obviously, you have to communicate clearly in your presentation, but beyond that, you don't have to have perfect English to have a very good presentation. And that should give a lot of you, I think, um, consolation. Secondly, you learn as much in the preparation as you do in the delivery of the presentation. So please focus on the preparation period. For me, it's the most important. This is the easy part, more or less. But preparing it, getting it clear, that's the difficult part for me. And then finally, the psychological aspect of presenting. I didn't talk about this, but through all of this, dressing, speaking, understanding your purpose in the presentation, all are all have in mind the audience and what they might be thinking. So the psychology of the audience is very interesting. I'm going to talk about that in a future live, in a future video, the, psych the psychology of giving presentations, because this is very fascinating, especially when you're live, when you're in front of people. This is a very interesting aspect. All right, I would like to conclude on those points. I hope you have found this beneficial.